Senator Cruz. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Ms. Peterson. The internationally accepted definition of anti-Semitism is enshrined in the International Holocaust Remembrance Alliance's working definition, the so-called IRA definition. That definition says it's anti-Semitic to engage in the quote-unquote targeting of the state of Israel conceived as a Jewish uh, collectivity by applying double standards not applied to similar democracies. Ms. Peterson, do you agree with the IRA definition that it is anti-Semitic to target Israel using double standards? Yes, Senator, I agree. Okay. Ms. Peterson, while you were at the top of DRL, the Bureau, published a notice of funding opportunity, what's called a NOFO, essentially a grant offer, for $1 million to fund NGOs to launch human rights investigations against and inside Israel. Now, as you know, I vociferously opposed that NOFO. I called for it to be canceled. I wrote a letter to Secretary Blinken highlighting that it was an outrage and that it was anti-Semitic under the plain terms of the IRA definition. In my letter, I outlined how your grant offer echoed decades of double standards and anti-Semitic campaigns against Israel and against Israeli Jews, how it echoed accusations that Israel steals lands and commits crimes against humanity. My letter was signed by a dozen Republicans. I also questioned in writing the president's then nominee to be the head of DRL, Uzra Zaya, about this grant. Now, there are a couple of things we didn't know at the time, but which we recently discovered. The first is that the State Department's own office to combat anti-Semitism, the special envoy to monitor and combat anti-Semitism, was also saying the same thing. They were saying the grant violated the IRA definition, and they were saying it applied double standards to Israel. That's the first thing. The second thing is that the person who was pushing the grant through the State Department, the person who was at the very top of approving it and defending it from criticism and answering questions, including my questions in my letter, that person, Ms. Peterson, was you. Ms. Peterson, why did you push for an anti-Semitic grant targeting Israeli Jews that even the State Department's anti-Semitism envoy wouldn't approve? Thank you very much for the opportunity to address this question, Senator. Let me first clarify that no activity was actually funded under this notice of funding opportunity. And I want to underscore that I personally take seriously any allegations of anti-Semitism and I am committed to working against it wherever it occurs. The policy of DRL is the policy of the Biden-Harris administration, and we continue to steadfastly support Israel and reject any and all delegitimization efforts. The Special Envoy's Office was among the entities that highlighted for us after, unfortunately, this notice of funding opportunity had gone public, how this could be construed. They should clearly have been brought in while this was being formulated. Um, we did continue to let that process run its course. We attempt to deliberately make our notices of funding opportunity broad in order to try to receive innovative proposals. Once we received everything that came in responding to what was in that notice of funding opportunity, we ran things through our very rigorous panel review process. Um, we heard the concerns from the Hill. We heard the concerns from American Jewish organizations, met with some of them to further hear concerns and explain what we were trying to accomplish. Um, but after the review and consideration of all of the factors in what we had originally thought we were trying to achieve and what had come in in actual applications, we did not feel that anything that came in um, really met what was required to take an activity, a legitimate activity forward in Israel. Well, you are absolutely right that it wasn't funded. And it wasn't funded because of my criticism, which your office tried hard to push back against. And, and in fact, I knew you would say what you just said, 
because I'm holding the answers that you and your office prepared for the State Department to give to Congress. And you prepared these answers back in 22 because, and, and I'll just go ahead and quote you, because reports that, quote, the department is supporting the delegitimization of Israel or the BDS movement or contributing to anti-Semitic activities with Senator Cruz calling for it to be canceled. Now, there are a couple of things about what you just said. First, this set of answers from back in 2022, I'm looking at the approvals on the back of it, and it was also not approved by your own Office of Anti-Semitism. So, when the State Department is facing, rightly, accusations of being anti-Semitic, and you're defending against them, and your own Office of Anti-Semitism is echoing those charges, why on earth do you still lock the Office of Anti-Semitism out of reviewing the answers and dig into defending a notice to fund an attack on Israel that was plainly unjustified and well within the standard definition of anti-Semitism? Senator, I will say flat out, it is deeply unfortunate that the Special Envoy's Office was not part of that clearance, but I will clarify that once we reached the point of the panel review process for the applications that actually came in on that notice of funding opportunity, they were very explicitly included in the review process of the applications. Thank you. 